All right, welcome back. It's time for us to get into our community development conversations. And today we are going to be based in Kumewu. Now, um, I've been joined in the studio by Samir Yafe, who is a broadcast journalist here at City TV and City FM, as well as Hansen Ajiman, also a broadcast journalist. And um, you're going to help us to get right into this conversation. Hansen, Sami, welcome. Thank you very Thank much. You. Wonderful. It's good to have you here. Yeah. Um, have you, I, th I don't think we've sat on the set together before. No. Oh, no. no. I yeah. think <laughs> it's the first one. Okay. It's the first time for everything. It's good. Right. So, Kumewu, um, it's a very interesting space. Um, I think I first did a trip to Kumewu back in 2014. Um, the uh, former um, Kotoko boss hails from there, and his father, of course, being one of the um, stalwarts of the MPP party, also, you know, hails from there. So that's my only connection with Kumewu and only recollection of Kumewu. But how important is this particular election? I mean, we are a few years yeah. to, or say months, yeah. to the 2024 general election. Yeah. The NPP is campaigning break the eight, so break the eight agenda. Mm. So our politics is at a part where there can be a defining incident mm. because since 1992, Ghana has passed the two-test system yeah. in political theory, which simply is that for every eight years, the dominant political party yeah, loses cool. power and give it to the other. So mm -hmm. from 92 to 2000, 2000 that's NDC, 2000 mm -hmm. to 2008 NPP, 2008 to 2016 NDC. And so the NPP is campaigning vigorously to change that. And yeah. that's why they are going with break the yeah. eight. Yeah. Now the NDC is also coming into this election with a flag bearer who's been a former president before, lost in 2016, lost in 2020, mm. hopeful to win. Now, there are certain dynamics of the election that seem to be not to be in the favor of the NPP. Mm. That is the economic conditions okay. and the IMF loan that we've gone for, mm. the uh, credit facility is a testament of the challenges we are facing. And so the NDC believes that based on these factors, the people of Ghana will vote for them. Mm. So any election at this point in time, yeah. before 2024, is good grounds for yeah. both political parties to test whether or not the electorates are actually Leaning buying, into, them buying into, their yeah. into their campaigns. Yeah. And so Kumewu is, mm. is a big one mm. because mainly because of that. Mm. So the parties, and if you listen to yeah. President Ekufa, the former president, John Mahama, if you listen to Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Simply, they are telling you that Kumawu is a litmus test mm. for what will happen in 2024. Mm. Mm. Reason, I think that Kumawu is a big deal. Okay, so we have quite a number of sound bites from you know these personalities as well, which we'll be bringing you later on. But Sami, can you take us back for those who are watching us and don't have the history of how we came to this by-election? Um, so by-elections do happen, but they happen for different reasons. And this is one of those situations. How did we come to this? All right, thank you very much, Kweku. So um, for a by-election to happen in every constituency, the number of factors, either the MP resigned or the NP switched carpet, as in move from one political party to the other, and then you must resign and go and take it. Or the MP dies mm -hmm. or even resigns. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case that we have now, the MP died. On the 27th of March uh, this year, Philip Baswa passed at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. It was officially announced in Parliament by the Speaker. And so this uh, prompted the AC to announce a date for a by-election, uh, which is happening today, 23rd of uh, May. So that's where we are now. It's because of the death of the sitting member of Parliament for the area. That's why there's a by-election today. He's been in Parliament since 2016. Um, in 2016, he won. In 2020, he retained the seat. And many people have thought that he was going to go for a third term. That was the 2024 election, but God knows best. Um, that didn't happen, and so he passed, and there's going to be a by-election now. Now, the Komoru seat, um, traditionally, mm. has been an MPP seat <coughs> since uh, the creation of the constituency in 1996. Mm. Um, out of the Komoru constituency, uh, two other constituencies were created from it, that's the Setra from Plains, and then the Setra Odumase mm. constituency. Now, mm. 
these were all part of the Komoro constituency, but in 2010, there had to be some break that it was left with the Komoro constituency alone. Okay. So traditionally, it's been an MPP seat. If you look at the, the election history or yeah. the political history of the constituency, it's been an MPP since, since then, and we don't see that changing anytime soon. As Hansen okay. said, uh, because next year is an election, mm. all these political parties want to test um, how prepared they are yeah. for the election next year and see how best they can garner more votes in these areas, especially when it comes to uh, by election. Mm. The MPP traditionally knows that it's not possible to win the seats. Um, they just want to show up or even make up the numbers. Because if you check the last election, I think the NDC had, uh, I think, five, two or 5,000 votes out of um, almost 20,000 votes. Okay. The MPP won by, I think, 14,000. <clears> the only individual the MPP today is very much worried about is the independent candidate, okay. which is um, uh, Dia Senior. Mm. There, there are two independent <laughs> candidates. <laughs> so, so there's Dia Junior and yeah. Dia Senior. Yeah. Now, Dia Senior um, contested in 2020 okay. um, as an independent candidate against the late member of parliament. Mm. And then he garnered, I think, 11,000 votes. Yeah. Oh, wow. 11,000 votes. So he's really a major threat for the MPP. Okay. And then they are, there's a fear and belief that if care is not taken, he may cause an upset. So if you realize all the campaigning activities in the constituency is garnered towards Kwekudia Senior, mm. because they see him as a major, major threat. Because if the 2020 election is anything to go by, mm. he's the only one who can really cause an upset for... Yeah the MPP candidate. Yeah. The MPP candidate is a new guy. Mm. You know, I think this is the first time he's contesting uh, this, the this, primary. This is the first time he's contesting, mm. but uh, sources within the grounds suggest that he's been with the, with late, the late Philip Basua. Philip yes, Basua. he was one of his boys. Okay. And so yeah. he is known in the constituency. Mm. Again, Philip Basua, the, the NS, Enim, Enim yes. yeah. and then the NPP candidate, mm. uh, Amankwa, the all NDC come candidate. the NDC, NDC candidate yeah. come from the same part within Kumewu. In Kumewu. It's yeah. one of the major towns in Kumewu. Yeah. So even though this is the first time um NSN it's, is coming as a parliamentary candidate, we are told that by virtue of his relationship with the lead MP yeah. and some of the works he's done in the constituency, mm -hmm. he's known. Um the NDC candidate also happens to be one of the notable persons. We are told he's a royal. He's a royal. Apparently his dad is the, is the um, Jantua Hene oh, of Kumeu. And the MPP guy too is also a, a royal. He's a royal. I think his dad, his dad is the chief of Bosoma or oh, okay. So <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a battle within that particular yeah. area, the Bosoma yeah. area there. So the, the, the independent candidate is also from the same area. Oh, wow. That we are told. So it's okay. more or less a battle within that particular area. and clear for more clear. And looking at the, 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 the electoral areas within there, it looks like the one who wins that particular mm. um, town will garner a lot of votes when mm. it comes to the area. So the MPP and DC are not leaving those areas to chance at mm. all. Mm. Now, talking about the independent candidate, yeah. so um, when it comes to Kumewu, yeah. it's... It's, if we hear independent candidates, but there's a particular trend. We've had about six or seven elections. It's just about two of them mm. that they didn't have an independent candidate okay. um, it, featuring in the election. Okay. So aside 1996, mm. and then I think in 2008, okay. all the other elections, they've I've been independent, independent candidates. candidates. Okay. In 2000, there was an independent candidate okay. in the name of... Um, I'll get the name. Mm. In 2012, 2004, there was an independent candidate okay. as well. 2008, there was an independent candidate, Dominic Cotin. 2012, mm. Dominic Cotin. I see. And so then in 2016, uh, there was also an independent candidate. And then in 2020, then Kwekudia comes in. Okay. So the NPP who has been winning this election for since 1996, yes. has had to contend with independent candidates. candidates. What we are told is that all these independent candidates, one way or the other, had affiliation to the NPP. Mm. Yesterday, on Eyewitness News, yes, there I was an talking. argument yeah. on <laughs> whether Kwekudia was an NPP yeah. uh, person. Yes. Uh, the party is saying that they do not have any records of him, of him being NPP. But if you listen to Chairman Noon to me, the Ashanti, mm. uh, the, 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 the Ashanti regional yeah, chairman, chairman of the NPP, mm. 
He tells you that Kwekudia has stabbed them in the back. And also what we get from our correspondents is that he intended to contest the 2020 mm. NPP parliamentary mm. candidate slot and withdrew at a point. Oh, okay. So the NPP who have hold the constituency since 1996 mm. have had to contend with all sorts of independent, independent candidates. candidates. Okay. But Kwekudia seems to be the a most, threat. The most formidable yeah. Yeah. threat yeah. so yeah. far. Because yeah. in 2020, mm. The NPP candidate got about 14,906 mm -hmm. votes. Okay. And then the Kwekudia... So had, I think 11,000. 11,000. Wow. So NPP Philip Basso had 14,960. Yeah. And Kwekudia had 11,698. Mm -hmm. Bernard Opokumafu was for the NDC. And this is 2020? This, this is 2020. 2020. Okay, so it means that he was coming up against an incumbent. Yes, he was yes. coming and against he Philip Bosua. Mm -hmm. He got mm -hmm. 11,698. Wow. And Bernard Opoku Mafo of the NDC had yeah. 2,439. Okay. Now, this is and this is why Sami is saying that the NPP seems not to be, mm. to be concerned about the NDC's candidate. Yeah. And so, if you look at it, if you, the, the margin here should be less than 3,300 mm. votes. And, and so, if it's... it's so, this is what we are looking at here. Yes. So that's 51.1% for yeah. Philip Basua, 40% mm. for Kwekudia, yeah. but Anmafo got 8.3%. Yeah. And then uh, Nana Mwaku, who represented the uh, Goom, the, the, the Goom uh, party, Sofo, Sofo 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 yes. uh, party okay. he got 0.6%. Okay. So uh, if, if, you, if you look at this figure, yeah. what's what written on, 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 the, on the set, yeah. um, the, the MPP this time around is having a relatively new candidate on the ballot, yeah. which is Yao, uh, Yao Enim. Yeah. So the, the threat is that Kweku Edwia has, has, been, has been on the ballot before. before. He's yeah. well-marketed yeah. within the constituency. Yeah. A lot of people know him mm. within the constituency. Mm. Now, the, within the MPP, there's a new guy yeah. who is now going to be marketed mm. more. So Kweku Edwia is really the threat mm. for the MPP mm if the party is, is, is concerned with yeah, how they can yeah, win the seat. Yeah. And, and, and um, the appearance of the second Kwekudia. <laughs> Kwekudia uh, senior, yeah. he's made categorical allegations yeah. that Kwekudia junior is being sponsored by I heard by him on Elements, yesterday yeah. Yeah. saying that um, elements within the want to be camp. Are sponsoring Kwekudia. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you see, even there were those suspicions. We don't have any proof to, to, yeah. to that. Yeah. But it's interesting how a candidate will pop up, mm. independent candidate, yeah. same Kwekudia, yeah. puts on same <laughs> kente, uh, kente or outfit. similar kente. Yeah. And then Kwekudia Senior, um, in the first notice of poll, his symbol was a dove mm. flying to the left. Okay. And Gokudia Junior <laughs> was, was, was a dove flying to the <laughs> right. And so, but I heard commentary um, <laughs> eyewitness about one of the doves being skinnier. Than <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Gokudia Senior, uh, his symbol yeah. was more bold than, okay. uh, yes, but... The Kwekudia Junior yeah. symbol, yeah. perhaps to create some <laughs> distinction, yeah. was a bit skeletal. Okay. So he was flying to the right. But the Electoral Commission has clarified that per their law, mm. when you're an independent candidate, because you're not already an established uh, party, party. Yeah. Yeah. you may not have existing logos mm. and colors. Mm. And so the Electoral Commission has the mandate to assign logos and colors to you. Oh, okay. And so they asked Kwekudia Jr. Mm. to come out with his own, a new logo okay. to create that the, 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 the distinguishing I, I factor. I saw one with an axe. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> be, because he didn't <laughs> respond to the Electoral Commission, yeah. So the electoral commission is ask. a great him <laughs> heart, but <laughs> <laughs> perhaps if we, if, if we get to the electoral commission, we should find out how they settled on an yeah. act of all the things yeah, in the, the world. Options. But it's in, in, in the mandate of the electoral commission <laughs> to do so. Okay, so, so before we continue, let's go and take a look at a report by our colleague uh, Hafiz Tijani on uh, the Kumewu situation that we are talking about this morning. Campaign activities have officially concluded in Kumeu, but the atmosphere 
remains charged. The election remains a significant topic for discussion among constituents in the constituency. The Electoral Commission has assured its readiness for the election and has called on political parties to contribute to ensuring a credible process. All that we are requiring from the candidates is for them to provide effective pooling agents, not the noisy one, the one who knows the difference between 69 and 96, the one who can understand adding up figures, for them to be at all the polling stations to represent them. They should be there throughout the voting period. During counting, they should be there and observe. After counting, if they are not in agreement, they can call for recounting. And when the counting is done, the collection of results forms will be filled. And they need to sign and then take a copy. That document the statum of pool and declaration of results at the polling station level forms the basic document for declaring results at all levels. So when they get it, they should send it to their candidates or their secretariat for them to add them up, collate them. They will have it earlier than the electoral commission, but we will wait for the hard copies. And when they have done that, they should move to the coalition center, the Electoral Commission Coalition Center, the Presby Church in Kumau. And then, if you pick a resource from one center, we will announce it audibly for everyone there to hear. There was a controversy over the use of the same symbols by two independent candidates, but the commission has explained how it resolved the issue. When the last Kwekudia came, you told him then, then, that. Your symbol resembled that of another candidate who has already filed, so you should go and change it. He said, no. We spoke to him, but still he said he would not change it because that is what he has used. Kwakudia was supposed to bring a symbol, and he said, no, you should still go by that. But it, that is against the law. If you look at the CI 27, Regulation 14, 1, B, and C, it is there, clear, black and white. And so when we're going to print the final notice of pool, commission had to allocate a symbol to Kwekubia. That was why we gave me hope. There is heavy police presence in the communities and patrols have been intensified to maintain security. The inspector general of police held a meeting with political parties ahead of Tuesday's polls. The new patriotic party has affirmed its commitment to ensuring peace during and after the polls. I can assure, I can assure that from our end, the MPP, we will not do anything untoward, you know, to break the peace in the community and also to create violence and tension. We will not do anything like that. We will go uh, like we have been in this constituency for over a month now, campaigning. There's not been any incidents of violence, chaos. We will maintain so. And, you know, until the vote is done, and we we'll leave the community as peaceful as we came to meet it. Similarly, the National Democratic Congress has also given assurances of their commitment to a peaceful process. Of course, um, the police will do the general security, will leave it to their hands. But we as a party will also put measures in place to ensure that um, we have whatever arrangements that we need to do internally to ensure that whatever plans that we put in place as far as um, our deployments are concerned, our collation of resources are concerned, declaration of the resources are concerned. That one, we are not leaving it into the hands of the, of the police, but we trust that the police will do the general policing and ensure that nobody comes in the great or necessary tension cause any harm to any voter. Over 34,000 voters are expected to cast their votes at 75 polling centers in the election. All right, so that is a report by our colleague Hafiz Tijani. And uh, just giving us some context, this is prior to today. So we'll definitely join them um, live uh, in Kume once we get the feed there. But yes, Hansen, we were talking earlier. And um, so 
Now there's four people. We are looking at the MPP having historically held it down, you know. NDC making some inroads. This year, it, or this election, it seems as though both parties are very keen on making inroads into the other's uh, traditional strongholds, which then supposes that Kumase, or let me say Ashanti region, is going to be one of those spaces that the Indies will be looking to penetrate, you know, even further than they have in the past. Now, how is Kumase going to play out in this regard? So the NDC from 2020 has maintained mm. that winning about one million votes yeah. in the Ashanti region is instrumental in their winning the general election. So it's been their target that if mm. they can garner up to one million votes mm. in the Ashanti region, which is considered as um, the, the stronghold yeah. of the NPP, then they win the general election. They have four seats in parliament from the Ashanti region now. Okay. Um, talk about Asawasi, talk Such about Setra Franklin, okay. talk about Idra Setra mm. and then one other. And so the NDC is seeking to increase its, uh, its, its hold mm. of the Ashanti region mm. by getting more constituencies. And they think that Kumawu is one of the constituencies that they can try as much as possible mm. to annex in their region. And so going into this election and even into 2024, it is clear that the NDC will be looking at uh, improving its performance yeah. in the Ashanti region. Yeah. Now, aside this, if you look at the makeup of the uh, national executives of the NDC now, the national organizer of the NDC, Joseph Yamin, mm. he did a greater, uh, spent a greater part of his politics in the Ashanti region. Okay. He's one of the known voices of in the, the Ashanti, Ashanti region, region. Yeah. a great critic of uh, the NPP government. He can just take his car, drive to any of the <laughs> remote places, and be filming an abandoned project. And so, with him being there as a national organizer, brings some form of dynamics into strategizing at the national level mm. for the region. Okay. Because of his knowledge of the region, he can help the national strategize appropriately mm. in the Ashanti region if they seek to increase their constituencies or their hold of the region. Now, when you come to the NPP, in... 2020, Chairman Wun to me went under a motto of uh, Agenda 4747. There are 47 constituencies in the Ashanti region. Chairman Wun to me said he was going to take all 47 constituencies. <laughs> of course, on the face of the facts, he failed. Yeah. And he was voted for again. It was a great issue in his election in the Ashanti region, which okay. a lot of people thought he was going to lose. Mm. And so the NPP want to maintain that idea that the Ashanti region is for us and we we'll win it on any other day. And so they want to maintain Kumewu and try as much as possible to take back constituencies like Asawase, etc., Franklins, and indicate their dominance mm. over the Ashanti region. The other thing also is that if you look at the Ashanti region, there have been concerns by a greater majority, some youth groups within the region, that even though consistently the region has voted for the NPP and been loyal to the NPP, mm. they think that the region has not benefited from the uh, party coming into power. Okay. And so we've seen protests in part of the region, mm. even in Swami, where the majority leader, Osei Chairman Sabon Singh, we saw those agitations yes. where uh, sachet waters sachet were thrown we were at him, him and yeah. all those things. <clears throat> and so the NDC is also looking at leveraging on those sentiments. Mm. And so if you listen to some of the NDC, and the, N the NDC, the former president, John Mahama, has been there. Mm. Uh, Dr. Dufour, who withdrew from the race, 
has been there. Mm. Uh, Kojo Bonsu is there as well. I think in the short... And a, a host of national executives. The host, national yeah. chairman was there, the general okay. secretary was there to whip up sentiments and see how best the party mm. can gun up more vote. For them, they know. They know very well that they are not going to win the seat. But okay. just to show up and probably push up their numbers, their numbers if there's yeah. anything to go at. The are, are candidates, which is the Akwesia Mankwa guy, has said that he's hoping to get 16,000 of the votes. You know, okay. a, to, a total of 34,000 people are expected to vote mm. today in 25 polling uh, 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 stations and then, um, yeah, 25 electoral areas, areas and then 75 polling mm. stations. So mm. the NDC candidate is hoping that he will get close to um, 16,000 votes. Okay. Now, if he gets 16,000 votes, it means he's winning the election. Yeah, because definitely. The, electra, the, the, the total def votes, you know, yeah. the, the voter population there is, yeah. is, is 34,000. Mm. And the independent, let's say the independent candidates and the MPP candidates will share the remaining. Yeah. It means the NDC is going to, which is relatively, relatively impossible. Possible. The last time NDC made a showing was in 1996, when one uh, Ibrahim guy had over 9,000 votes okay. in their constituency. So that's the highest they've ever that's had. The highest. But actually... Since that, 1996, high. the vote of both the NPP and, and the, the NDC, NDC has dwindled. Yeah. So NPP uh, started 1996 with over 21,000 votes. Okay. And the NDC getting 9,000. 9,000. Mm. It's, it's the highest they've ever it's shown. It's the highest and that it has dwindled to 14,000 for the mm. NPP mm. in 2020 mm. and 2,000 for the NDC. Which also suggests that the, the place of a third force seems to be more significant in Kumewu than other places you yeah, typically... I, I, th I think Kumewu is, is, is a place to understudy when it comes to third force. Because mm. the, the third force candidates, yeah. aside one of the uh, years that the, the candidate was fought, mm. in all these, the, the third force candidates are either second or third. Yeah. Yeah. Make a showing. Yeah. So if it were to be any other constituencies... That was not a natural stronghold. Mm -hmm. It would have been difficult for mm -hmm. the yeah. mm -hmm. NPP because to consistently, and 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 so I talked about 2008, yeah. Dominic yeah. Cotin, yeah. and 2012. Now in 2008, Dominic Cotin had over 7,000 votes. Yeah. By 2012, his votes had dwindled to 3,000. So. What the NPP and people hmm. we've spoken to on the ground is that they are hoping that same will apply to Kwekudia. Okay. That during the 2020 election... Kwekudia senior or junior? Kwekudia senior. <laughs> <laughs> during, the, during the 2020 election, <laughs> there was a party. Yeah. And a lot of people had issues with the party. And reason party members followed you. They are thinking that two years is enough for hmm. a cooling effect yeah so that all those people who followed him will come back home and so they are looking at the situation where um Kwekudia seniors votes mm. will even reduce there's been a poll by musa Dankwa yeah global, global info, info analytics yeah that seems to be tilting towards that analogy that we are getting from the npp on the ground okay that Kwekudia got 30 to percent mm. but he may get 16 percent when it comes to the main election uh, when it comes to the by-election by -election. today and so they are looking at that effect that despite the fact that um Kwekudia got lots of votes yeah. in 2020 yeah. because of the fact that they've been able to now close their ranks mm. they've been able to speak to people who were dissatisfied with issues. And, 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 and one thing we also should realize is that in every by-election, the voter turnout has not been encouraging mm. in every by-election okay. since we started having by-elections in the country. Okay. The turnout in major elections has always been higher compared okay. to a by-election. Okay. So you normally have a by-election, let's say, on a working day. Mm. And now what people want to go to the farm. Mm. And Kumo is a typical farming, farming town. Yeah. Farming town. So mm. people don't really care. They want to go to their farms, yeah. go and hustle, do their one or two activities to, you know, put food on the table. Mm. So a lot of people don't really care when it comes to a by-election. The turnout is always low mm. compared to a major election where mm. there's always a sentiment and a web and the like. So we don't expect all 34,000 
voters to show up okay. to vote today. Okay. If we'll get crap, maybe 20,000 or even I less. See. Because I a lot see. of people will want to engage a lot of things mm. without it. And the people have also complained about the overnight development within the constituency. Which is? Which is fixing of roads. Okay. Even at night, midnight. Okay. And that's not peculiar to Kumeu. No, it's not. <laughs> Almost <laughs> everywhere they are going to buy yeah. election. They're, 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 they're actually <laughs> people who always pray that there should be there should a by election. So, they so that we can see more because development. When there's... Uh, the government has come to say that it's not related to the by-election, but it's very difficult. But it's, it's to, always been. It's very it's, difficult yeah. to 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 say that it's not related. It's always been. These roads have been bad. All of a sudden, we, you we move see contractors to the road, asphalting them at and night. And this is at a point in time when major road projects across the country have been halted. Yeah. Mm. The Obechi thing touching has been halted. The Swami runabout in, uh, project that was ongoing had been halted mm -hmm. because of ongoing negotiations with the IMF. And all of a sudden, contractors moved to sites on the swam, uh, on the Kumehu Road, Kumehu Road, which has been it. bad, which <laughs> we've reported of armed robbery attacks. And yeah. someone was talking about the occupational makeup of Kumehu. So yeah. it's made up of a lot of um, farming communities. Mm. And so often than not, most of them cut their goods to various markets mm. outside of Kumehu to go and sell. Yeah. Equally, there are a lot of trading activities in Kumewo. So you get a lot of people move to Kumase mm. to yeah. take goods. Mm. And we've reported on a number of uh, situations where armed robbers have used, uh, taken advantage of the poor nature yeah. of the road and mm. how there are no street lights mm. to attack these traders. And so if you listen to some of these uh, market women, if you listen to some of these indigents, they say that even though they can link the by-election to the roads that they are constructing, mm. for them it's a good thing because at the end of the day, what it means is that they are concerned about their roads to be addressed. Yeah. But the issue is whether or not they will finish the construction <laughs> before <laughs> the by-election ends. The by-election will end today. Yeah. And if it ends, would, would they the, necessarily the continue? continue yeah, because yes. we've seen instances yeah. where... Uh, the by election. Over. <laughs> <laughs> the contractor yeah. packed these things and then he left. I mean, you know, but I've, I've heard the road minister say that even after the election, construction will still continue mm. because that, the roads. That's, the roads an, assur been, that's an assurance for a politician. Because the roads have been awarded on contract already. <laughs> that, that, awarded on contract that, already. That, so that, even that, after the election, you'll still get these contractors still on the ground, ensuring that they finish the project they've started. But I'm sure by 5 p.m., we'll know whether the contractors will still be. On the ground the, or not? The, 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 the residents usually make a reference to Sakra Wono. Mm. Yeah. I think in the lead up to the 2020 yes. general election, and then you know, even that's the, John's hometown. That's also, even yes. you, when he died, during <laughs> the, the, the days ahead <laughs> of the funeral, the funeral, there were major yeah. construction yeah. going on there. A lot of construction. Major, major construction. Contractors moved to site. Going on there. And then, because the, the residents funeral, were saying that they were not going to allow the politicians <laughs> yeah. come for Sir John's Funeral. funeral. Yeah. yeah. Then after the funeral and everything, that was it. That's it. Left. You know? Sakra will know is like how it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, as you mentioned earlier, we've had um, uh, the president there um, for the funeral. We've also had um, the vice president was also there, and um, the former president has also been making comments and all of that. Let's take a look at uh, some sound bites from the uh, various leaders who were in the community and hear what they had to say. You name say NDC Omuna Moho Omun C and to Obama NDC candidate. Omuka say you wait for you more now. And I say and drink Mukai NDC Omua Hono Yada Susumo Doom Somo a fear num and yasa Omu Pesa Yasanko Doom Sobium Musa Pesa and Sanko Doom Sobium and over 
NDC Brasso, teacher for Omotimia Juma, Fia Mansa, now Motuomoka, Busuma Biansaka. Sane Pesaya Kono, Sane Pesaya Kono, NDC Brasso, teacher training allowance, Omoy Castle, Omoy Castle, Yaba Yan Famba, Yan Famba, Yapuspa Samusanko, Sanwa. Now twenty twenty four. And pa say also no and I'm so bravo 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 and I'm bad one Kuma U and I'm a bit sassy I'm like a guy I'm back on one song I'm like a Kuma U and I'm sassy I'm a Kunibia and I'm a Wakasi and I'm so no I'm a I know and I'm on a banner, sir. Yakako Yi, Yen Baba Silver Basua Nemo. I call ya Brantia Fair Fair Fair. Come on, come on. Let me tell from Wakuma Park. Oh, Banova the Summo. Oh, by and so so. Party no name, what it is, and what could be a bomb. A baby, you are in the call, and you know what? Hey, you are a nest, you are a mean. Number one, no. and then you. Number one, no. About one, and then you. Number one, no. small baby, I Number one, I don't know, baby, I want to sign a base, you know. Who was no one? Now they are in a team hall. So, say, I'm not here. Baby, I was no one, no. Now they are in a team hall. I <laughs> Tuesday, a DHN, a very by election, and I'm a spin yard. I said, I said, my main fat of seeing Besham of Corsa. Yen, I in him, a young Kufa, a war, and this in him, and a woman of mine. The female, the air president, now, I know a young Kufa, a queen, a baha, a brain saying, I'm a dead hospital now, yes, you know. I'm saying, I'm this in a whole bank as I say, you hear, yeah, go more for a deal for so that I had. And so, send a yard, you free up him, or move to walk a gram, I feel my tissue, or more yard, and can't take it. The stranger be some baby, we send a bear. At the frontier, I did host a movie see her, and come on, my being a home for so. All right, so there you've heard uh, uh, various leaders making their comments uh, regarding this particular election. It seems to be heating up, you know, just at the right temperature. But it also means when you have, you know, these kinds of sentiments on the ground and um, various opposing views and all that, that security can be a challenge. Um, let's talk about that. You know, how much of concern should we have how much concern should we have regarding the security issues in Kumewu? i i i feel we don't have any challenge when it comes to security really in in Kumo because it's it's a straight fight and a lot of times there are issues of security when there is a sort of balance as to who okay. is going to win okay um, when when the seat is normally a neutral seat, mm. where any of the two political parties Could have a greater win. chance yeah. of winning, 
that's when there's always tension and, and, and fights here and there. So a typical example, um, if there's any by-election we can remember, um, is that also West War gone. Okay. Because that election could have gone anybody's way mm. because of uh, the circumstances or the, the history in that particular constituency. Mm. So there will always be tension in such constituencies. Another one was the Talency by elections. So okay. we had been in the Upper East region where it was an MPP seat. Um, the, 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 the MP became a, a chief. Mm. So he had to leave the seat. And then it, it, it was one of the most tensed by election mm. eyewitness because you I, were there in person. I was there in person. So it was a very intense. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's not something I want to remember. Um, really? Yeah. And that uh, bad. It was that bad. It was that bad. And uh, I also by election too, I was there. Mm. Um, I saw everything happen, uh, the tension and all the likes. But in Komu, mm. I don't see tension because it's, it's a straight fight. And because the, 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 the NDC, which uh, is challenging this particular seat, knows very well that it, it won't be um, um, a seat they can win unless mm. miraculously or it could become uh, the seventh wonder of this world. Um, they won't really put in much effort. <laughs> they won't really put in much effort because even at the last minute, when the MPP was holding a series of rallies, mm. the MPP, the NDC didn't organize a rally. They, well, they, they met they with did interested community, groups. Yeah, community yes. engagement. Okay. Or like the MPP, which held a major, major rally. So well, I but, don't but really on see... That, on, that, uh, on that level, what the NDC is saying is that if you look at the rally, the allegations that the NPP actually bust people from other constituencies. That has always been to, an allegation. To, 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 it's to always been an allegation of and so And you, the two you, political you, parties, and you can't, the two, hold on, hold on, the two political parties <laughs> have always bust people to but rallies. You, so you yeah. cannot, the two you, political so you cannot have necessarily always done that. use base and, and, support. And, and, and it is on not numbers. going to, on numbers, on those, going who to come, today on tomorrow. those who come to rallies, because strategizing differs from party to party. Mm. When the former president went to Kumewu, for instance, he met with the Muslim community okay. of Kumewu. Okay. Make some specific targets. Mm. Met some specific groups okay. within the constituency. Okay. And so even though it's traditionally an NPP seat, mm. you would have to look at all other factors. Mm. And what are the factors? I'm, before you talk about an election, you should look at the interest at play. Yeah. Now, we've dealt with the first interest, which has to do with looking into 2024. Yeah. There's another interest of the numbers in Parliament. Mind you, the, it ended 137, 137 mm. in 2020 mm -hmm. for both parties, mm -hmm. with the independent candidate for Formana yeah. separating both sides, going yeah. for the NPP. Yeah. An Ashanti region seat. Yes. yes. Then, along the line... I seen not issues come up. And just recently, the Supreme Court makes a decision that mm -hmm. his name should be expanded. Yeah. And so technically, the officially, the NDC seats in Parliament are 136. Mm. And then the NPP seats remain at 137, 137, 137 plus the independent yeah. candidate, 138. Mm. So let's say 137 now because uh, Kumewu has, is, is under radar for a by election. Yes, yes. So the NDC will be hoping to capture it and to mm. push their figures Up. back to 137. Yeah. And so the NDC, uh, the NPP will remain at, at 136. 137. Okay. 137, the independent candidate then, then money, they're making it 138. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, then the MPP seats will then now become 136. No, because see, yes, exactly. So, but the independent so, candidate joining them makes it 138. Yes. No, yeah. no, no, but no. So, I mean, let's clarify this. So, we had 137, 137. Yes. Jachikwe is out. So, it's 136. Yes. But Philip Boisoir is also yes. gone, which comes to 136. Yes. yes. Right. So, if the MPP uh, wins this election, which is, it looks like a given, then it's 137, and then you have independent. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. so if NDC but wins... But if NDC wins, then MPP will now be at yeah, 136 yeah, no, yeah, with yeah, NDC yeah, at 137. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then it becomes 137... Needing the MP, uh, independent candidate necessarily to balance the numbers. So mm -hmm. it will mm -hmm. become 
if NDC is able to win, yeah. it will become 137, 137. Yeah. With Asin North left to be, to be, to be, to, to to be, be struggled for, which yeah. uh, presumably very soon the, there may be a by election. There may as be well. a by election yeah. as well. And so if you look at it from the numbers game in parliament, and if you look at how there's been that level of acrimony within mm, mm. parliament from the election of Speaker Bagwin yeah. to E. Levy mm. to all these things, you want to get that there's that form of interest yeah. within in that election. Mm. The NDC, I'm not sure, will take it just lying that they are going to lose that election. <laughs> Even if they lose, yeah. in strategizing, what we've heard from, from the ground is that there are two, two ambitions here. The first is to win. If that is not possible, the second is to increase their votes. Yeah. Okay. Now, they got 2,000 last, yeah, last year. Time. If they are able to get about 15,000. Their candidate says 16,000. The candidate says 16,000. <laughs> 16, okay. Even if they are able to make up to 10,000 of their votes yeah. and even lose. Mm. The president, Nane Kufado, got over 80% mm. of the votes. Mm in 2020. Okay. Now, by increasing the vote margin from 2,000 to 10,000, mm. it's a serious boost for the morale of the base of the party. Yeah. And it can be a bragging right that even in, in Kumewu, Kumewu yeah. where they've comfortably won, they we lost, gave we their gave money. them a run for their mm. money. Mm. And so, NDC has everything to prove in Kumewu. Mm. And they will try as much as possible to, do to that. prove that. And so that means that the interests that were in talency, the interests that were in Ayawa um, Suez were gone, yeah. still exist in Kumewu. Mm. And if you don't try as much as possible to manage situations, we may end up with the same stories of by elections. We know what the police has done. Yesterday, the IGP was there met with the political parties. Mm, mm. We know the political parties have been asked to give an indication of, of their commitment to peace yesterday when Hafi spoke to the youth organizer of the NPP and the national organizer of the NDC. They both gave an indication that yeah. they are going to ensure that peace is, is maintained. And I think that the, the police and relevant authorities should try as much as possible to work towards peace. I was in Iowa, so West mm. Wogon. It wasn't an easy <laughs> one. <laughs> you know what? Let's go and speak with Hafiz um, this morning. Hafiz, good morning. Hello, Hafiz. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Dave. Yes, welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you, Dave. What can you tell us about what's happening in Kumewu this morning? Well, so constituents at Kumewu are visiting various polling centers to cast their vote in the much anticipated by election. And, you know, this has been talked about. Political parties have done their campaign. The police have also strategized. The Electoral Commission that is also supervising the election has also strategized. And the D day has come. So everyone is going about their duty. The Electoral Commission officials at the various polling centers are discharging their duty. The voters are also coming to the centers to vote. You know, this constituency itself, um, most of the communities here are typical farming communities. So you have people coming to vote before going to their various farms. You have others who have gone to their farms early in the morning and are coming back. So with their cars, they come to the polling centers to vote before they go home. So you see people carrying their produce. Uh, they put it at one side of the polling center. They vote and they proceed to wherever they are going to. So, so far, mm. there has been a peaceful atmosphere at the polling centers we have discussed so far. And people are comporting themselves and taking through the process very well. Havis, does that seem to be um, heightened interest in this election beyond maybe like the last general election in, in Kumewu? So this is so because we have um, a sitting member of parliament who passed on. 
Mm. And it is so because uh, we have a hung parliament now. So both parties, the major political parties who have interest, vested interest in parliament in terms of parliamentary duties, want to uh, close that gap. So you have the MPP trying to retain the seat, and you have the NDC also trying to snatch the seat from the MPP. And more interesting is that there's an independent candidate who contested in the 2020 general election and made some inroads, which is a dominant constituency for the MPP, but he tried to sail through and made some votes. He came second in the 2020 parliamentary election. Mm. And that independent candidate is in this way also. So it is making the contest very keen. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, the question I was asking earlier was actually about the, ge the general uh, population on the ground, the, the people of Kumawu themselves who are going to go out and vote today. Does there seem to be heightened interest in this election? Well, exactly so. So people want to have Kumewu, um, as it stands now, they don't have a member of parliament. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a representative in parliament. So mm. constituents want to vote so that they can have a representative in parliament. So everyone is taking part in this election. And I must say, the education has, done, uh, has gone down well with the constituents. The elderly are turning up in their numbers this okay. morning at the various polling stations. You don't find uh, the active youth within the constituency. I would say, or uh, one may say, they will come later. But mm. you are seeing more of the elderly as most of the polling stations who are being aided either by their children or their grandchildren to go to the various centers to go. So the interest is very high for the constituency at Kumewu. All right. Um, so... Uh, have, have there any particular interesting things that have happened? You said security seems to be very good. Uh, the, the people are queuing to vote normally. Have you been through the different um, polling stations? Um, and, and is there anything that is of concern at all? Well, so far, there has not been any concern from the Electoral Commission in terms of their materials, talk of the verification uh, device they are using. Everything is working so far at the centers we have visited. I have interacted mm. with the uh, station officers or the police officers in charge, yeah. and they have said that they have had their materials arrive at the various polling centers very early, and they have been able to set up, and they have tested all the kits and they are working in mm. terms of security like you mentioned security is very high you know yeah. yesterday the idp met the political parties to kind of seek some assurances from them and also give them the assurance what the police would do to ensure that there's a peaceful by election and the political parties have also gave out their commitment so mm. this morning police have been deployed to the centers we have about three or police uh, or two police officers at each polling station. We are having other patrol teams who are going at the various centers to augment the strength of the officers who are strengthened at these polling stations. And you are having district divisional and then regional commanders within the Ashanti region. You know, the Ashanti region has now been divided into three in terms of police regions. So you have divisional and district police officers who are also going around and trying to engage the officers and also check the exercise. And um, a while ago, I was at a polling center where um, the deputy Ashanti regional police commander came around and he sacked um, some of the uh, constituents who or residents who did not have any duty to perform at the polling station. So he told them to move away from the center and they complied and move away. So mm -hmm. it, it's cool in terms of security and the police officers are also using body cams to uh, do the monitoring of this exercise. Talk to us about allegations of vote buying. What have you heard? What do you know? 
Also, from last two weeks, we have seen a number of videos that have circulated online um, that people are, were, were sharing rice and other uh, foodstuffs and cloth to uh, constituents within the communities in the area. Uh, so these videos have gone viral. The major political parties have pointed accusing fingers to each other. The NDC says that it is the MPP that was engaging in this act, and the MPP was also accusing the NDC of uh, engaging in this act. So uh, these videos have gone viral, but uh, some of the constituents have also confirmed to receiving some of these items, but they are not able to point out to a particular party that has presented this to them. All right. Um, and finally, before you leave us, um, any comments on uh, the emergence of a second Kwekudia? Well, so uh, that is also raising uh, an eyebrow. You know, uh, on several platforms, the MPP has accused the first Kwekudia who was a member of that party before he took that decision to become an independent candidate mm. or being an NDC member or an NDC sponsored candidate. And others are also saying that because the uh, MPP uh, is seeing the emergence of the independent candidate as a threat in this election, they will also want to bring another one with the same name, with the same dressing, and that candidate even had a, the same symbol uh, until the Electoral Commission changed the symbol on the ballot. Mm. So people were saying that the MPP did that to uh, also compete, to let him compete with this independent candidate so the votes can split. But the Electoral Commission has settled on another symbol for the second independent candidate, yeah. but uh, people say that he can also be a disturbance to the first independent candidate who emerged. All right, Hafiz, thank you very much. Do stay safe, and um, we'll come back to you as and when uh, there are uh, updates to be uh, received from your end. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you, David. Hafiz Tijani. Yeah, so, um, so interesting. Yeah, morning. so I was talking about the stakes. Yes. So for me, I think I think that the stakes are high. Mm. The IGP is trying as much as possible to get everybody yeah. on board, and I think it's it's important. Mm. And I was about talking about my experience at yes. Iowa West. Tell us about what happened. Yeah. So I went to Iowa West <laughs> and then <laughs> went to look at the. Uh, police centers at um, Legon, mm. and then from Legon try to move to Baalishi. Then we get to Baalishi, and then there's commotion. Mm. We are trying to understand what is happening, speaking to the various police agents and also the electoral commission officers. Before we realize there are people in Balaclavas and yeah. in their uh, black and, and khaki mm. and walking about, didn't know what was happening. <laughs> went behind the school, came back holding a lot of, so they came back and then we saw some heavily built men also racing. Then we tried to get interview with them of what was happening. They said, well, these people came to attack us. At the time we didn't know who was who and- Yeah, who's- Before the position. interview could get to its first, second minute, then we heard gunshots everywhere. Wow. And so, there's a video that we used to play. <laughs> you see me running <laughs> to... <laughs> it was really a thing of events on that you video. Because I had gone there. Yeah. But then I was, I was asked to move and go to another <laughs> electoral area, okay. which was Ablake Bay. So okay. I'd left them in Balaisi okay. and then moved to Ablake Bay. So yeah. I was on my way to Ablake Bay. Yeah. That's when I heard the violence. So, 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 so what, I, what I, I guess is coming, um, the question is coming to my mind is that what was it in the melting pot of the Baalishi area that seemed to have triggered that. Because I, I was always were going, it's quite large. And there are other areas, they were quiet, you know. So Baalishi uh, is considered as one of the areas that the NDC makes inroads okay. in Iowa West Wogon. Okay. I think the Iowa West Wogon constituency um, 
since uh, in 1996, the, the, the election came up that they voted for an NDC candidate. The NPP candidate went to court. The court declared that the election of the NDC candidate was... That's Rebecca Adote. Adote was and Nile then, and uh, Boy. George okay. uh, Amu. Amu. Yes, George That's Amu. That's my constituents so I have a better yes. understanding George, of that. George yeah. Amu. And so even though Rebecca acted as MP, MP for four years. from 1996 <laughs> to 2000, Mm. Per the court, the NPP won. So even the NDC acted, mm. NPP won in 96, okay. but NDC acted because that was what the Electoral Commission yeah. declared. So from 2000, George Amu wins. Then 2004, another candidate come, comes. Frema comes. Frema yeah. comes. Okay. 2008, okay. Yeah. Uh, Frema goes again, Frema goes wins. Again. 2012, the late Ejakon, Ejakon yeah. wins. Mm. 2016, Ejaku wins, okay. and then 2018, Ejaku mm. yeah. dies. Okay. And then the wife election. takes over, okay. and then the by election. Mm. And DC had had a number of candidates. I think I mean, every talk, election, they, they change, they yeah, change candidates. Talk about Iwada who came in 2012 and 2016, and then uh, the Lali Kwesi came in. The Lali Kwesi, what came in? The Lali, the Lali of Impon was, was 2020, 2016. No, 2016. And then the by election. The by election, okay. yeah. Yeah, so the NDC thought they could take. Even the Elvis Efri Yankra had contested yeah. that seat before. Elvis okay. has. And then uh, Chum, um, the former CEO of the Free Zones Board. Could you? Could you Chum? Yeah. Or yes. Also, has also contested. So, yeah, been in that area so before. In, in, at Baoleshi. The NDC has been doing mm. very well. Even mm. in the 2020 election, John Dumelo actually led the NDC okay. in that electoral area. Okay. And so the, the, the stakes were high in Baoleshi. Okay. Okay. And just like in Kumawu, we are told that there are certain electoral areas that are of that, interest to the, the, That NDC. are leaning towards the NDC. Okay. And these are some of the things that we need to look out okay. for. Where one party may be trying to uh, perhaps reduce the number of people who come and vote in the stronghold of ah, the other. And okay. that is where sometimes okay. these tactics will come, come in. and yeah. will lead. And so we can only hope that they would go according to yeah. their pledge mm. to peace mm. and that the police and the security agencies would be on top of their job. Fantastic. Because it, it, it actually destroys everything and yeah. the beauty yeah. of yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in in, in Ayao's West Wogon, there's a man currently who used to be a footballer, cannot use his legs because mm. he was shot in mm. the leg. Mm. Mm. There are a lot of people who who be maimed mm. by virtue of that. These things, you talk yeah. about talent, you get people at home. Yeah. So, we shouldn't allow it to repeat yeah. in Kumewo. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a great conversation. I've enjoyed myself thoroughly. <laughs> I, I, I love the, you know, the discovery of the, and understanding better of these things. And so thank you very much to Samir Yafi, to uh, um, Hansen, Kofi Hansen, and Jiman. Uh, both of them broadcast journalists here at City TV and City FM.